Hey, hello, my church family. As always, we are so glad that you are joining in with us for our next group of discussion questions. I'm Pastor Courtney, and I am here to help you navigate through the latest sermon by Pastor Wes and figure out how we can be about applying it to our lives. So go ahead and sit down with your family or with your group of friends online and Let's get ready to jump into the Word of God and into this brand new series here at Aloma, all right? But before we do that, we always want to make sure that our hearts and our minds are settled and ready to receive instruction from the Holy Spirit. So let's open up with a word of prayer and then a quick time of worship. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. You're awesome. You are magnificent. You are wonderful. You are above and beyond anything that we could ever compare to you, God. You are perfect in your nature, triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, God, we ask that you would be with us today in this time as we spend time together around your word to learn more about you and to figure out what we can do to better serve and glorify you in our church and in our community. God, we ask that you would be with our time. Help us to understand your word better. Be glorified in each and everything that we do. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sing with us. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lives. So we pour out. In our lives, so we pour out a praise to you only. Yeah. You give life, you give life, you are love, you bring life to the darkness, you give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lives. So we So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, only to you, Jesus. Yeah. And
Okay, so this week, Pastor West started a new sermon series entitled Carriers of Hope. As believers in the midst of a lost world, whether it's during a pandemic or not, we have an eternal hope that the rest of the world cannot understand, a hope rooted in the person of Jesus Christ. And this hope that we have is not something that we have in and of ourselves, but it is something supernatural that is a gift to the believer. Galatians 5, 5 says, For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. This hope is the kind of hope that lasts into eternity. Pastor West said this this week, Eternal hope is carried by faith through love, and it's all a working of God in me. As believers, we are secure in our hope for tomorrow and all the days to follow. This leads us to our first question. How should meditating on the hope of Christ cause me to become a better Christian? Or I'll say it this way, what kind of fruit should thinking on my hope produce?
Hey guys, just as a quick reminder, if you need more time to discuss this question with your group, feel free to pause this video now and continue talking. We don't want to rush you if there's still more to be discussed. All right, so by faith, we have a hope rooted in the love of Jesus. And it's important for us to dwell on this fact and never forget that we have this kind of hope by consistently remembering the hope of Christ the hope of resurrection and eternity. I believe that it will lend to the Christian displaying the fruit of boldness and love, working together in harmony. It is a boldness that's directed by love and a love that is placed on display boldly, both in our lifestyle and in our proclamation. Boldness is defined as fearlessness before danger. The assurance of faith in Christ led John and Peter to proclaim the gospel boldly. And after being commanded to no longer preach, the church in Jerusalem prayed, and now Lord, look upon their threats and grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. This is in Acts chapter four, verse 29. Hope in Christ allows us to speak when fear would normally silence us, to say no to things that we know are wrong and to risk the rejection of the world knowing that we have a heavenly reward. We have nothing to fear because of our eternal hope in Jesus Christ. Again, this is a boldness that must be directed by love. Pastor West referenced 1 Corinthians 13, Paul's famous chapter on love. And in verse two, Paul writes, if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. The hope of Christ is rooted in the love of Christ. And if we're going to rightly proclaim the goodness of Jesus, we must do it with love as our motive. All right, so it's one thing to have the hope of Christ, but it can be another thing altogether to live as a carrier of hope. Sometimes we have hope and live like we don't have any. And then there are other times when we live like we have this hope, but we live like it's just for us and it's not for the rest of the world. But to actually live like a carrier of hope means more than just being a Christian. Spend your next few minutes discussing this two-part question. What does it mean to live like a carrier of hope and why should I?
Believe it or not, God has designed it so that we are the only way that the world who ever received the good news that Jesus Christ came to save them from their sins and deliver them from a bondage to death and punishment. Love was this week's main emphasis as we thought about what it means to be carriers of hope. And with the reality of either eternal fellowship with or eternal separation from God weighing in the balance, we should love people enough to carry hope to them that they could otherwise never have access to. We also need to remember that for the Christian, this carrying of hope is a biblical calling. Paul says in Romans that people will never hear if Christians are not sent to tell them. And in 2 Corinthians, he tells believers that they are ambassadors for Christ. Peter says it this way in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Carrying hope to the world is a part of our design as believers. Another thing that's a part of our makeup as believers is the indwelling Holy Spirit. When we place faith in Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit takes residence in us, empowering and working through us. In Galatians 5, the passage that Pastor West focused on this week, we see that one thing the Holy Spirit will do in us is produce fruit. When we walk in step with what the Holy Spirit commands, these fruit of the Spirit will be the natural resulting outcome of our obedience. This is what it means when we say walk in the Spirit. So over the next amount of time, discuss this question. How does walking in the Spirit make you a more successful carrier of hope?
First and foremost, when we walk in the Spirit, carrying hope to the world around us will be a natural outcome of our obedience. The Bible is clear about God's desire for us to show the world the hope that we have in Christ. And by walking in the Spirit, all of the fruit that's necessary to make you a successful communicator of the message of hope will present themselves in both your life and in your speech. Love, patience, kindness, and gentleness with all other good things will testify to the truth of the good news of Christ even as you speak to others about it. On the flip side, by not walking in the Spirit, we risk inaccurately representing Christ, something that we obviously want to avoid. Okay, so when I was a child, I remember that it was more of an issue if I acted out in public than it was if I acted out at home. Because when I acted out in public, it was a reflection on my family. It communicated that I ain't have no home training. So just as this would have been a poor reflection on my biological parents, by failing to live as the Holy Spirit instructs, we poorly reflect our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ as well. So the sad thing about this is that even though we try, we all at times fail to walk in the Spirit. We act and speak in ways we shouldn't and we fail to rightly represent God in our actions. We simply just mess up. Pastor West said this, he says, we have all failed people we truly love. We have sinfully put ourselves and our desires over that of someone else. We have all been impatient and easily angered. Praise God that this doesn't have to be the end of our story or the legacy that we have to be remembered for. Even though we have messed up in the past, we can still love others and make an impact on them. Carrying the hope of Christ is something that we can do regardless of our past history because it is needed for every person today. With that in mind, spend your last discussion time answering this question. How can we allow even our failures to motivate us toward loving others?
Sometimes our failures can get in the way of our being useful. We can think that because we failed in the past, that means that we shouldn't try again. We can think that because we have messed up before, we are unusable by God. But the truth is that everyone fails, even the best Christians. And these failures should not cause us to think about ourselves, but about the grace of Christ displayed toward us. When I recognize and repent of my shortcomings, I know that God has forgiven me and that my sin has been swallowed up in his grace. That should spur me on to share such good news. In addition to this, when I realize that Christ has shown me such grace, I'm compelled to so show the same kind of grace to others. I can still love people who have wronged me or have been unkind to me because I know how Jesus responds to my shortcomings. And based on that, we should let humility lead the way in our loving others. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all I got for you this week. Um, thanks again for joining us in this new series of discussion questions. Remember, if you have any questions about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to follow Christ, what it means to walk in the spirit, we want you to ask the facilitator of your group and I'm sure that they'll be able to answer your questions or you can contact us here directly at the church at info at um, Keep checking in on us and all of our digital outlets to get access to more free online content. Y'all have a great week and God bless.